I'm very excited. I feel like I'm like purging myself of this show. Like, you know what I heard Scorsese talk about when you're doing like a Wolf of Wall Street? You live with these characters and that mindset and you have to kind of purge yourself of like that mindset. So I feel like I've been living with douche and douchebags for like the last four years. And I'm like, all right, I don't, <laughs> I gotta purge myself of this right now. <laughs> Morning. We are on our way to the Gorilla Wanderers Creative Lab. Today, Sean and Elizabeth are going to have an interview with Cindy from Diggin Mag, which is very cool. Uh, we've actually met Cindy before. I met her at CineQuest. Sean met her a few years ago at another film festival. So she's going to come down, do a little interview for Doucheaholics, as well as just Gorilla Wanderers in general. But it should be very interesting. Cindy uh, from Diggin Magazine is uh, doing an interview here at the Creative Lab and uh, we're setting up for it. I'm Cindy Marum with Diggin Magazine. Diggin Magazine is an entertainment, fashion, and arts publication. We travel the world in search of the best in film, fashion, art, and culture. I've seen the trailer and I've um, been watching all the little snippets and clips on Instagram, which are really fun to watch. So I want to get to know the characters and just binge watch, basically. Hi, this is Cindy Marin with Diggin Magazine, and I'm here with Elizabeth Mitchell and Sean McCarthy of Gorilla Wanderers, the production team behind Doucheaholics. And what exactly is it about? Um, Doucheaholics is essentially AA, but they're all douchebags. They're all, they're all <laughs> addicted to a certain douchery within themselves, and they come to this support group. Um, but the problem is, you know, when you're surrounded by a bunch of other douchebags, it doesn't really help you become a better person. Like, if anything, like, I think it makes them kind of worse. So even though they're not really, like, good for each other, there's a, a love and a support and a connection between all of them. So if you could tell me, how did the story come about for the series? Well, the idea for Doucheaholics actually came about, we were just having a little, like, pretend play fight where we were just kind of name-calling. Doucheaholics came out at one point, and uh, we both kind of went, like, Oh, we should we should do something with that. And then originally we were thinking maybe like a short film, but then we started thinking about how many douchebags there are, and we were just like, oh, we could like we could take this all the way with a series. Well, we know all these other actors that we really love, and how can we like incorporate them in there? And then how can we harness their energy for the right kind of douchebag character too? So that was that was the genesis for it. And how did you find the cast for the series? Everyone in Doucheaholics uh, we actually had worked with in the past. They were either like a good friend slash collaborator or just a collaborator who over the course of Doucheaholics became a good friend. It's like a, like a musical or some kind of dance sequence where you're trying to wait to see, is that funny? Is that funny? I'll try it again or say it again, a different inflection or try this. You're trying to discover that tone or discover what the piece is about and how to actually make it funny. I think that's the fun where it happens where those little, it's set up where it can be like stressful or whatnot, but when you find those moments of delight where like surprises, that's where I guess the, that's where the fun of the comedy happens. Who wrote the script? I wrote the script, but Elizabeth and I would work in a very detailed capacity and the rest of our team too, we'd bounce around ideas, but like every single person who sat in the Doucheaholic circle, the role was written for them. During the writing process, uh, Elizabeth and I would just go back and forth on like this idea or that. So it was a very collaborative process in that one. How do you feel about audiences finally getting to watch it? And how do you hope for them to react? Like our hope in making this is just to, you know, anywhere from just put a smile on someone's face and make them laugh and brighten their day, to maybe like if they recognize something about themselves and the characters, maybe like help someone out to, to reevaluate themselves. I'm just excited for anyone to watch it and, and feel anything. That's what we do. We're the coolest time in the world that you can actually make anything that you want to make. There's a lot of laughing and, and finding moments. There's also a lot of like stress and actually working to get that, find that exact moment. And then now you have the distribution system. We're able to share this in the same way and, and that's never really happened before. To me, that's really exciting that people can just click a button and watch our show and before that just, that opportunity didn't really exist. 
15 years ago. That's really awesome. And we're so excited to see it. So congratulations on Dushaholics and best of luck with it. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Sure. Today. We're very big fans of Vegan. So, Sean, how was that? That was great. Yeah. We have Cindy, you just come in here right now, and we uh, had a great interview with Elizabeth and Cindy for Digging Magazine. And now we're going to go uh, work on some edits, social media, to get this whole puppy out to, uh, to the world. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. First, we really want to thank Cindy for actually making the article, which you can find at www.digginmag.com. And go check out the article. She did a great write-up and also, of course, watch the interview with Sean and Elizabeth. This was great. I, I really appreciate her for putting this together. Cindy is amazing. She has a, quite a busy schedule and she took the time out to do this interview. Really appreciate her and thank you for that. And if you can, please go to the website, show some love. And if you really want to know what does it take to get the word out there on your project, it requires this. A lot of this. This is not the last interview we're going to be doing. Thanks again, Cindy, and I'll see you all next time. Yeah.